Everybody knows what causes inflation, right? Inflation actually refers to creating more money out of thin air, you know, unlike gold or Bitcoin, which are limited by physics and, and mathematics. Often inflation is described as too much money chasing too few goods. What this means is if there is too much physical currency floating around the economy, then the money's worth is diluted. The amount of money in circulation increases, but there's a big problem because after a while, it means the worth of every note starts to fall. Most people have been taught that this is how inflation works. The evil government spends money on things and that increases the amount of money in circulation, which drives prices up. And it is true that this is what happened in the Weimar Republic in Germany after World War I. In order to pay massive reparations to the Allies after World War I, Germany printed a lot of their currency, the mark. One result of all this additional money was higher and higher prices. Prices. By November 1923, it took a trillion marks to buy one U.S. dollar. But modern first world countries don't actually print money like this. And in fact, the only time they do print money is when banks sell their bonds to the government. The empirical data tells us a very different story. Prices don't rise because the government prints money. The government prints money because prices rise. This might sound like an extremely radical position. So let's look at everybody's favorite socialist publication. Forbes. Here, economist John T. Harvey says, the phenomenon that Milton Friedman identifies as key to the whole process, the excess of the money supply over money demand, cannot happen in real life. Because the actual mechanisms available are Fed purchases of government debt from the public, Fed loans to banks through the discount window, or Fed adjustment of reserve requirements so that the banks can make more loans from the same volume of deposit. All of these can raise M, but not a single solitary one of them can occur without the conscious and voluntary cooperation of a private sector agent. The key here is that price can be the initiating factor. In fact, it has to be since the money supply can't. In short, the reason prices keep going up is because capitalists keep raising prices. This reality is in conflict with what's taught in Econ 101. This shows a monopolistically competitive firm in the short run. Now, how do I know it's a short run? Well, because they're making profit. But eventually, other firms are going to see them making profit. And they're going to enter the industry. And that's going to end up with a graph that looks just like this. The total revenue is right there. The total cost is right there. So no economic profit in the long run. Econ students are taught that profits fall to zero in the long run because firms are supposed to produce at the supposed profit maximizing quantity. This is the point where producing one more unit would cost more than it would earn them in revenue causing profits to fall. But whenever people collect actual data, they find out that capitalists are charging far more than this supposed profit maximizing quantity. This behavior is deemed irrational, but it actually isn't. Instead of competing at the limits of their capacity, where they would need to adjust to changes in demand by changing price, capitalists prefer to build up excess capacity so that they can quickly adjust to demand, limit their competition, and keep their prices the same. Capitalists aren't producing to maximize utility they're just adding a markup to the costs that go into making the product. So prices rise faster than they fall. On average, the immediate response to a positive cost shock is at least twice the response to a negative shock, and that difference is sustained for at least five to eight months. There are at least 19 studies that say business enterprises stated that variations in their prices within practical limits, given the prices of their competitors, produced virtually no change in their sales, and that variations in the market price, especially downward, produced little, if any, changes in market sales in the short term. Moreover, when the price changes significant enough to result in a non-insignificant change in sales, the impact on profits has been sufficiently negative to persuade enterprises not to try the experiment again. Inflation doesn't happen because governments print money. Inflation happens because capitalism does not work the way it's supposed to. Competition does not drive prices down. Profits drive prices up. And when those prices get too high, people start taking out loans to pay them and the banks expand the money supply.